Hi everyone, it's Vache here from RecordingStudio9.com and today I will be reviewing and presenting you a new studio gear that I recently purchased uh, which is the Presonus um, Studio Channel Strip if you can, if you can say, uh, which is a one rack unit and tube pre-amplifier. So I'll be uh, talking about it, demonstrating it, and, and talking about all the different knobs and buttons that it actually has. Hopefully, it'll give you some additional information uh, if you have uh, thinking, if you have decided, or you are thinking about uh, purchasing one yourself um, to use in your home studio. I purchased a unit from a music shop uh, down in Crosnes in New South Wales. It's called the big music shop and it is a big music shop and they um, supply and provide ver large range of musical instruments from guitars to uh, wind instrument, drums as well as keyboards and uh, they even have a studio set up so be able to go there and try things out, speakers, microphones and uh, keyboards and controllers and so on so it's a fantastic place to be. Um, so ask for Trent he is the expert there and he'll be able to help you as well. So um, thanks for Big Music Studio for giving me a great deal on the Presonus um, Studio channel. They normally recommend the retail price of $459. Um, I think you might be able to find on eBay maybe $370, $380. Uh, and I got a better deal than that. So, um, so good deal. So without any further ado, let's get closer to the equipment and I'll go through some of the knobs and the buttons and explain what they do and what it is good for. Now you'll probably be asking if you already have an audio interface like the one I have which is the uh, Presonus AudioBox 1818 VSL which has, you know, eight pre-amplifiers where you can plug in microphones, uh, guitars, um, keyboards and instruments and so on, why would you want to spend money um, and get another pre-amplifier? Well, there are good reasons. One of the main reasons is, uh, like any audio interface that connects to your computer, they try to make it as transparent as possible. So they don't have any settings as such. Um, where you'll be able to uh, tailor the sound that's coming in, whether if it's from a microphone or guitar or keyboards, you won't be able to tailor that. Where having a separate um, preamplifier before your audio interface, that means which has the options like the studio channel, like compression and EQ and so on, you'll be able to tailor the sound, color it, make it warmer, make it brighter, make it boomier, make it tighter. So, you know, using compression and EQ and before you feed that into your um, audio interface. Especially in case where you have instruments with large dynamic range. If you have a vocalist which is really loud, um, it's not a matter of just turning the volume down, but being using compression with the right settings to give um, the audio interface a clean signal to record because it's already been shaped, all the picks taken care of. Um, and if and similar to uh, using different microphones, you might be able to adjust their tonality with the equalizer. Or if you're plugging in a guitar in, you know, turn the tube up and give that a little bit more distortion or um, give it compression and, and so on. So you, there's a lot you can do. Um, and that's probably one of the valid reasons for me to purchase the, uh, the, the tube channel um, and be able to adjust things. And since I purchased it, obviously I was able to um, plug my microphones in and do a couple of test recordings. And I have to say, it's just fantastic. And to the other fact that you are able to play around with knobs and switches and not, uh, especially with compression and EQ, and not actually see any graph like in a DAW uh, when you're recording and or giving some EQ settings and compression. Um, you have to use your ears and not your eyes to hear what, what you're changing. 
so that when you're adding a compression you let your ears do the adjustment and not your eyes because your ears are the ones who are listening to music. Same with the EQ, you'll be able to adjust the microphone setting or the guitar setting or whatever instrument you're recording. Give that personal touch from your ear and not your eyes. Um, and that will make a lot of difference because that's what I did when I was setting my microphone up. Um, I started playing around, giving a little bit of this, a little bit of that from my understanding and knowledge of um, what my vocal sounds like, uh, how well I would like to hear it and adjust it. And when it's recorded in my dough, um, it sounds pretty much perfect. There's hardly anything to do um, other than give a little bit of reverb and maybe a, a touch of echo and bam, it's, it's done. So that's, for me, that's one of the good reasons to be able to have a physical um, uh, control of my sound before it goes into my audio interface and into my door. So, hopefully that was helpful. Let's go into some of the settings and what you can play and what you can do with this fantastic unit. Okay, let's have a look at the, the unit, the Presonus Studio Channel Tube Pre Amplifier. It is a one rack unit, a 19 inch unit, and it nicely fits um, in, in, in its place. Now it has a few sections that um, allows you to adjust things, and they are in quite a good order as well. So you have the input settings with the uh, input volume control, tube drive, and some of the buttons which I'll go through them. Um, then you have the compression uh, so you'll be able to adjust uh, the compression settings. Uh, VU display that uh, displays either the uh, signal coming in or uh, by pressing one of these buttons it actually gives you a reduction signal uh, if you're using the compressor. Then you have the parametric equalizer on your right hand side and then output volume. Um, so let's go through some of its uh, settings. At the back of the unit you have uh, two inputs, well which is one technically one channel input, so you have either XLR or TRS uh, balance input and XLR and TRS uh, balance output as well. And at the front of the unit, you do have an input for an instrument, so you can plug your guitar in, or bass guitar, and, or um, another uh, similar instrument in there. And from the first part, you have your input volume control, so this adjusts the amount of signal coming in. And if it's a condenser microphone, or microphones that require the 48 volt uh, power, then you have the 48 volt power that you can turn it on and off. Um, then you also have the phase control. So if you have multiple microphones uh, coming through and it's, there's a phase issue, um, then you can use this button to uh, change the phase and hopefully uh, avoid any um, uh, phasing cancellation problems using multiple microphones. Next to that one you have uh, the 20 dB pad which by pressing it allows you to reduce the input volume further or down 20 dB. Um, so if you in case you've got uh, high level inputs if you're using the TRS inputs at the back for uh, synthesizers and so on you can quite easily press the 20 dB pad and it'll give you um, a sound reduction. And then you have the high pass of 80 Hz so that's really good for um, if you're recording microphones to avoid any pops and as well as room resonances and so on. Um, and finally you have the tube drive which basically turning it clockwise allows more of the signal go through the tube um, and counterclockwise less signal going through the tube. So usually for vocals you might want to have anywhere between 20 to 30 percent if you want nice warm tube sound um, but otherwise again it's a personal choice or you can turn it up for more of the tubes warm sounds. Next we have the compressor 
and with any standard uh, compressor it does have the threshold the ratio setting attack and release and uh, and gain um, so you can adjust the threshold that you like uh, for the incoming signal to start um, reducing the gain of the input signal and that gain is controlled by the ratio so the higher the ratio the more reduction of the gain um, and then you use the attack to tell the system how quickly you want the gain reduction to activate so the, the uh, counterclockwise the quicker faster uh, and clockwise it will give you more time for the signal to pass through before the gain reduction happens and with the release again it's the same concept but when the signal has gone how long before it actually releases and back to normal volume so you can adjust that um, so you can control um, how quickly the signal comes back to normal levels um, and then with the gain control there that allows you to control uh, how much signal to add again after the compression that you lost so once you reduce your dynamic range you want to be able to move that volume up so it, it's the same level signal that's coming in uh, that's going out except obviously it will be compressed um, to whatever compression setting that you have now a few other buttons we have at the top we have the soft which basically allows the um, the signal to start uh, gradually and softly um, um, redu gain reduction just slightly before the threshold and even afterwards so you don't have a sort of quick slam down on the signal but more gradual uh, signal uh, signal reduction and that's probably good for vocals and things so you don't have that quick and noticeable uh, volume changes so it makes it really nice and smooth changes um, next to that one we have the auto by pressing auto it basically allows the system to look ahead um, and adjust the attack and the release settings uh, automatically so that means that once you press the auto these buttons no longer active uh, the internal um, uh, processing system takes over to adjust that automatically for you you also have a uh, next button is EQ before compression normally you would have that off so uh, again it's a preference um, for the signal coming through to have compression uh, and then the equalizer and then output but if you like to have the other way around if you like to equalize the sound before you compress it you can press that button it brings the EQ before the compressor in the sound uh, moving uh, you know the audio chain and last but not least button is the gain reduction meter so at the moment uh, you may not be able to see it I'll, um, uh, the signal is actually uh, showing the incoming signal so it's sitting on the left hand side so as signal comes through the VU meter will move up by pressing the gain reduction we are basically allowing the signal uh, to view the signal that's being re uh, re reduced so we'll be sitting at 0 dB and as the compressor taking control and reducing the signal that signal metal will actually go to the left telling you how much compression is happening how much uh, uh, reduction is happening so that so that you can adjust your output gain uh, of the compressor to, uh, to to match the incoming signal so that's what that is for the gain uh, reduction to the meter and of course a bypass so you'll be able to use that to do an a b check to see how much changes you've done you know, how much effect is actually happening to your changes when you're pressing the um, uh, the compressor bypass next we have our paramatic equalizer and again the first button here is available is your EQ bypass so you'll be able to do again same as the compressor uh, bypass the equalizer so you can adjust um, the settings and do a bypass to compare the signal before the adjustment and then after the adjustment um, it has low mid uh, and high uh, three channels 
where you'll be able to adjust the low frequency, mid frequency and high frequency, uh, either reduce or um, give gain to the low frequency set by the frequency uh, setting. Uh, same with the mid, so you adjust your uh, frequency that you want to change and give it a gain or reduction. Same with the high, uh, set the frequency in either reducing or giving gain to that uh, part of the frequency range. Now, one of the, uh, obviously the way this works um, is that you set the frequency and as you give it a gain or reduce a gain, it works like a bass and a treble control of, you know, hi-fi systems. That's the easiest I can explain. But if you want um, for these things to actually work as a peak, so you're only adjusting that frequency and not the frequency below that uh, set one, you can press the peak. So that will give you sort of like a, a bell shape option. So you're only adjusting um, the, uh, the frequency that you have selected. I think with, from the, um, uh, the instruction, that will give you about Q value of two. So uh, it's a nice uh, sort of uh, wide Q for that peak. Same with the high end. If you press the peak, you're actually getting a peak at that top end. So if you want, want to get rid of um, S's, it like the easing and, and, and the easing and so on, you can select the frequency that's causing s s s s sounds and then reduce it and then that's your uh, easy, the easer uh, for that. And with the mid one, it's always a peak and you'll be able to adjust the Q setting for, uh, for that frequency that you have selected. And last but not least is, is actually our output uh, volume. So you can adjust the volume at the end of the audio chain. Well, I hope that was informative enough for you. I was able to go through um, pretty much all of the settings and what they are used for and how to be able to adjust them. And as always, if you need more information, you read the manual. Uh, but really, um, you really don't need much of the manual because everything is pretty straightforward. And as I said, use your ears to adjust the things and make it work and let it sound how you like it to sound. If you have any questions, any queries about uh, uh, the Persona Studio One, anything you'd like to ask, please feel free to use the comment section to uh, put your comments and I'll be more than happy to answer them uh, for you. And if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please do so. And uh, you can always visit my website as well, recordingstudio9.com for plenty of information about recording and reviews and, and, and a lot. I've got a few more gears that I have purchased recently as well. I'll be doing some reviews as well as showing you how to do things. Um, and until next time, thanks for watching and be good.